What is going on, guys? Welcome to another Emma Gardner live stream. Just trying to get here set up. I think we are set up and good to go on YouTube as well. Uh, yes, we are. So, uh, fantastic, fantastic. Let me know if the stream comes through okay. I want to make sure the quality is good. Um, but uh, we're live on YouTube as well as Facebook. Just having a good hangout session and answering any gardening questions you may have. Now, I did want to let you all know that uh, right off the bat, we're going to talk about something that um, a lot of you have been asking about, and that is seed restocks and garlic. Now, that's not the topic of today's uh, kind of hangout session. I don't want to, you know, detract from you guys asking your gardening questions. That's what I want the today's premise to be all about. Um, how, uh, however, we're going to be putting garlic in stock next week. I know I said this week. However, next week is when we're going to be putting it in stock. For sure, 100% chance next week it's going to be in stock. Um, <clears throat> so we're definitely putting it in stock. And then seeds restocking. Um, for those of you that want to plant a fall garden, that want to get uh, you know get a good start, um, you want to get your seeds now. Now you can go over to mygardener.com. Uh, Katie, our inventory manager, is actually loading. Uh, basically, we, re we recounted all of the seeds that uh, were marked as sold out. And we typically have about a 10% margin of error that we typically will kind of kind of just keep on hand in case something happens, right? So she actually just put those in stock or is putting those in stock as we speak. And, um, ow, sorry, uh, <laughs> I had a, had a little, had a, a pebble in my, in my sock. Um, so, um, yes, so basically, the garlic is going to be in stock next week, and the seeds are going to be in stock in about three to five minutes. So if you want to get some seeds, what I'd recommend doing, because we do the free shipping on seed orders of $12 or more, I would recommend that you take this time to do any shopping. You can always use the code SHARE10 or SAVE10 to save 10% on your order. And we also just loaded in a bunch of new stuff like our fertilizers, a uh, lot more stuff just a ton of stuff just came back in stock. So um, take some time, do some shopping, hang out, uh, and uh, and support you know support a an amazing movement, uh, which is what you do when you support MI Gardener. We're supporting the the whole gardening community with what we're doing, and we're really proud of it. So uh, for those of you that want to go, go check out seeds, awesome, garlic next week. Don't worry. So uh, I want to take some time to uh, to uh, answer some questions here address some people. Uh, hello, Melinda. Uh, hello, Pamela. Hello, Felina. And uh, let's see here on Facebook. Uh, hello, Virginia. How's it going? Uh, yes, I am live streaming both on YouTube and Facebook. Uh, YouTube, if you could let me know if the sounds good. Facebook, let me know if the sounds good. Um, I'm outside right now just because it's a beautiful day, like absolutely beautiful. Um, I got two episodes filmed, and uh, because I got two episodes filmed, I'm going to spend probably most of tomorrow editing those up um, with the holiday weekend kind of giving us a shortened week. Uh, I had kind of a lot of catch-up to do, so I'm, I'm about one day behind my normal upload schedule. So uh, the video I filmed today should be up tomorrow, and then the video I filmed, the other video that I filmed today should actually be up either on like Monday or Tuesday, but we'll figure it out. So, so hello, Tony. How's it going from Illinois? And hello, Montana and Jay, Mindy. Hopefully you guys had a wonderful Labor Day weekend. Oh man, <laughs> I'll tell you what, now that school is back in session, it is like, oh my gosh, it feels like fall is here. You know, Labor Day always kind of, I mean, yes, Labor Day kind of feels like the you know, the uh, societal end to summer, even though summer is not over until like, I think like the end of October or something like that. But it feels like the end of summer. But today was like, wow, the weather was so nice today. In the garden, the birds were chirping. Uh, the beans are going crazy. Uh, hopefully, let me know what you guys are planting in terms of fall beans um, or in terms of fall crops. <laughs> I uh, Man, the fall beans that I planted are doing so good. The fall cucumbers are doing insane. Uh, if you guys have any questions on fall gardening, I'd be happy to answer them. 
Um, for those that are just chiming in, uh, a lot of you want to know when garlic is going to be in stock. Again, I just touched on that. Um, I'm not going to dwell on that too much because that's not the purpose of today's live stream, but garlic's going to be in stock next week. We will get it to you before the season ends. Uh, I mean, you'll have plenty of time to get it in the ground. Do not worry. You can plant garlic, even here in Michigan, you can plant garlic up until October 1st. So we've got boatloads of time to get garlic in stock and to get it in your hands. Trust me, we're going to be totally fine. In fact, we're even a little bit earlier this year than we were last year. So don't panic. Don't panic. It'll be fine. We'll have garlic in stock and something that we really did. So you guys can go over to the, to the website and join the wait list to be notified when the garlic does come in stock. One thing we did this year is a lot of you know that prices have gone way up with things like fertilizer, really anything, let's be real. Um, garlic has not gone up in price. This was a dedication that uh, I basically set earlier this year. I told our team, I said, you guys, we have worked extremely hard to gain the support that we have, uh, build the movement that we have, and... I want to make sure that right now, more than ever, even if we have to take a slight hit on our bottom line or profitability as a company, I am devoted to making sure that as many people that want to grow their own food and get food, you know, have access to food security can. And so this year, we did not increase our prices on seed packets, despite the fact that almost every single seed company raised their prices. We did not. And that also applied to our fertilizer. We did not raise prices on fertilizer. We did not raise prices on garlic. There was zero price increases this year across the board because we wanted to make sure that we were kind of the the, the counter to what society was, was doing because it's so important that you guys grow your own food. Now more than ever, it's important. Um, I mean, I know that a couple years ago, there was a lot of food shortages and stuff like that. Or not a couple years ago, maybe about a year ago or so. You went to the grocery store and you couldn't find anything. Well, this year... Uh, they're really expecting the food shortages to actually be, hey, can you guys stop, please? Thank you. <laughs> Geneva's got a friend over and just thinking it's funny to be a goofball. Um, so, um, so what was I getting at? Oh yeah. So the food shortages are going to translate more to higher food prices later. And that obviously is found in inflation and food prices are never, are never a great thing because they are not discretionary. You need food to survive. And so what you can do is if you want to decrease your cost of living, you can actually grow your own food. You can actually increase your standard of living by growing a higher quality product without increasing your cost of living, which I think is amazing. This year uh, from our garden, and it's been a rough year with the drought, we're going to be growing roughly about $2,000 uh, worth of vegetables from our garden, which is absolutely insane. Um, between, you know, lettuce, beans, peas, cucumbers, tomatoes, I mean, you name it, we've grown it all. Um, it was, we had a bumper crop for, for pears. We probably grew, I would say probably about a hundred to $200 worth of pears from just, you know, one, basically one pear tree essentially. Um, so that was amazing. So yeah, we've grown so much, so much food and it's, it's been phenomenal. So I want to get to some questions. Um, no more tangents there. I want, to, I want to address some questions, hang out with you guys for a little bit. It is uh, Thursday night football. Whoop, whoop, whoop. I am, uh, yeah, <clears throat> so um, I'm not a huge football fan, but I am in a fantasy football league, so uh, we're going to be watching that pretty soon. Um, but, uh, yeah, so how's you guys' fall garden doing? Let's see. I'm going to shift you guys just a little bit there. There we go. Hopefully the lighting's okay. Is the lighting okay? <laughs> The sun is kind of, it's creating a lot of glare and for my, you know, from my perspective, it's creating a ton of glare from where the sun is setting. Um, I didn't want to be too backlit, so I apologize. I know Facebook, I can see you're less backlit than, <laughs> than the YouTube channel is, but uh, I love both of you guys. Both of our channels I love equally because it's not, it's not Facebook versus YouTube. It's like the MI Gardener channel, you know, and sometimes I like to do a dual stream, but I apologize, those that are watching on YouTube, you guys are a little backlit. <clears throat> so uh, let's see here. We'll answer a question on Facebook first, and then we'll answer one on YouTube. So Sasha writes, uh, I have some ghost peppers. Uh, whoa, hold on. Uh, I have some ghost peppers that are green. 
and I bring them in to ripen them in Southeast Michigan. So Sasha, uh, ghost peppers are extremely hot peppers. Hot peppers take longer to ripen than sweet peppers do um, for whatever reason. And they will ripen if you bring them indoors. However, you want to typically see them like, like you would do with a tomato. You wouldn't bring a super hard dark green tomato inside and expect it to ripen. Um, it, just, it just wouldn't ripen. So you can bring them inside and they will definitely ripen if they're starting to blush. What you can also do, as I've talked about a lot, we actually have a YouTube video on how to do this. You can actually dig up your pepper plant and replant it. Uh, you can plant it in a pot, take it inside for the winter, put it in a you know bright sunny window or underneath some grow lights, and you can actually um, you can actually grow it all winter long. You can overwinter your peppers very easily. So, uh, Alex, uh, let's see, pretty uh, pretty well. Watermelon is good. Passion fruit is great, and pomegranate uh, tree amazing. Oh, that's awesome. That is if you're growing a lot of things. I'd love to grow, but. A little difficult here in Michigan. <clears throat> Steve, you're growing some romaine lettuce. That's good. Happy for you. Yeah, right now is, if you guys have not planted any lettuce, get it going. Um, by the way, I did just get the notification, just got the notification from Katie, our inventory manager, that uh, that seeds are in stock. We just put a bunch of seeds back in stock. So, um, you know, don't leave the stream or, you know, leave and come back. Uh, but, if you guys are wanting to do some shopping of seeds, um, everything is in stock. Um, and you can always, like I said, you can always use the code SHARE10 to save 10%. That's just kind of our our gift. It's your, off of a one-time purchase. So if you haven't ever used that code before, use that code and save 10%. Excuse me. Uh, Roy, help with grasshoppers. Who? Well, uh, chickens would be my first thing. If you can't do chickens... Um, I always recommend a butterfly net. Butterfly nets are, they might seem extremely childish, but for things like, uh, things like the, um, cucumber moths or, uh, sorry, uh, the, uh, cabbage moths, cabbage moths are awesome for butterfly net because, uh, you're catching the adult moths. You're, you're actually preventing them from laying eggs, right? Um, the caterpillars themselves are what's damaging your crops. But a butterfly net, swoop in, grab them. Uh, things like grasshoppers. You know, you're wanting to catch the grasshopper, and it's difficult to kind of spray because they're they're kind of a migrating pest. So uh, try to swoop them up with a with a with a cat or a a butterfly net, and that should really work. Uh, we also use those for Japanese beetles, and they work awesome. I mean, you just basically just brush it along the tree, capture them up in the net, and you when you get them in the bottom of the net, you just dump them into a jar of oil and they basically drown and well they don't live very long <laughs> put it that way <clears throat> when will garlic be available so garlic's be available next week for sure we're actually early this year i know that a lot of you feel like um there's a lot of like urgency to get garlic and get it planted you do not have to get garlic planted this early in michigan you typically want to plant about 30 days before your last frost date. So, you know, for us right here, that'd be like October 1st. It's barely September. We have so much time to get your order out, to get it in your hands, and to help you, you know, to get you growing bigger going home. So don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. We're going to, you're going to be, we're going to be fine. Um, so next week. Uh, what day next week? Uh, I don't I don't exactly know. I know it's going to be later than Tuesday because the garlic is actually coming from our farm. Well, not our farm, but one of our farmers that grows garlic for us. <clears throat> and uh, that garlic is coming from, <clears throat> excuse me, the garlic is coming from out of state. It comes from uh, wa or, uh, Wisconsin. So Wisconsin is a huge uh, grower of garlic. And they are shipping it in from our farm, small family farm that's growing it for us. Um, and uh, his name is John. He's, he's a really great guy. And, uh, and we have a couple other farmers that are growing some garlic for us as well. So we have garlic coming, but it's been, it's kind of held up in transit right now. So we know it's coming around Tuesday and then we just have to sort it out, count it, 
and then just kind of give it a quick cleanup and we're going to list it. So maybe like Wednesday or Thursday. Wednesday is pushing it. Thursday is a little more realistic. So somewhere in there. But we will notify everybody. Plus, if you go and join the wait list, you'll be notified as soon as it comes back in stock. <clears throat> can you grow a lemon tree outdoors in zone six? No, no, you definitely can't. Definitely can't. Uh, unfortunately, those need to be, you can care, grow them in a pot and then take them inside for the winter. We'll answer a couple of Facebook here. Uh, oh, did I say did I say last frost? Yeah, I'm sorry. I meant first frost. I'm sorry, guys. Yeah, no, I meant first frost. It's 30 days until our first frost. Uh, and so, um, yes, that's around like, it's like around like October like 25th to October 30th is usually when we have our first frost here, right here. Again, every place is going to be different. I can't say when your first frost is going to be. We get a lot of um, warm water off of Lake Huron. Uh, it actually kind of protects us where we're at. So it acts as kind of a microclimate. And we, we typically get about two extra weeks of growing season compared to like 10 miles inland that doesn't get that warm water. So yeah, good point. But yeah, I apologize. Not, not last frost. Oh, sorry guys. Man, it's been a long day. I was out in the garden. Whew, sorry, I was out in the garden. And uh, I was out in the garden for about probably three and a half hours. And I'll tell you what, it's like 72 degrees right now. 72 degrees in the garden. Tell me there isn't a better time to be in the garden. Like, I'm a little bit of a romantic. But man, a slight breeze, sun out, bluebird sky. You guys can see, I mean, it's like, woo, woo -wee. I wish I had a hammock, man. I would take a siesta. Oh, man. And I'm not much of a napper during midday, but wow, it's been pristine weather today. Pristine weather. <clears throat> this is what I live for, by the way. Like a lot of people think like, oh, Michigan summers must be nice. No, they're not. They're not nice. Michigan summers are not nice. Michigan springs and falls are really nice. Um, Michigan summers are super hot and humid because of all that humidity coming off the lake. It's like Mississippi. It's like 90% humidity. The windows fog up in the morning. It's so hot. Um, you, know, you walk outside and your glasses instantly just like steam up. So no, Michigan summers are not that great. Now, Michigan falls. Yes, that's what I, that's what I live here for. For three whole months between like a, basically about a month in the spring and two months in the fall. Yeah, baby. I'll take it. Three months out of 12. Let's go. 25% of the year, beautiful weather. That's worth it. Oh, man. Uh, uh, Randy asks, what varieties of garlic do you grow in Michigan? So, Randy, we grow a combination of hard neck and soft neck. Um, we grow basically all the varieties that we carry on migardener.com. So if you're interested in, in growing, you know, specific varieties of garlic, go check out those. You can read the descriptions to see which one you might like to grow best. But um, when it comes to the the types, there's hard neck and soft neck, and we grow both of them. So here in Michigan, we're able to do that. But I can't speak for like northern Michigan because uh, soft neck, we're kind of right at the fringe of like soft neck growing zone. Uh, Bonita says, will your garlic survive in Alabama? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, no, our garlic is, I mean, our garlic is grown in the Great Lakes region, but I mean, we ship it all over the United States uh, and we can ship it to you. No problem. Um, we can even ship it to Canada now, which is awesome. We weren't able to before, but uh, we're able to now. So if you're even in your, if, even if you're in Canada, give it a shot, you know, check it out. The shipping is a little pricey to Canada, but we don't set the shipping prices. That's, that's uh, Canadian post. So. <clears throat> Let's 
see. <laughs> uh, man, oh my gosh, so many comments. Um, uh, will Softneck grow here in Zone Five, Western New York? Um, it should, should, um, but I would recommend going Hardneck. You're gonna get bigger cloves, and they're just gonna probably overwinter a little bit better for you. Uh, that's what I would recommend. All right, let's answer some questions here on YouTube here. Well, I'll tell you what, guys, I might not make it. I might not make it to Thursday night football. I'm gonna be falling asleep. Uh, thank. Oh, by the way, North Star Prep Setters uh, in the chat. If you are interested in checking out another really cool channel, go check out North Star Prep Setter. They're a great channel, and I uh, always appreciate you guys moderating. Thank you so much, North Star. Uh, let's see here. Um, yeah, no, I mean, ask any questions. No, there's seriously, um, Amy, you can ask any questions you want. Um, it's not exclusively about fall gardening. I mean, I'm sure there's probably some people watching in Australia right now that are just basically going into spring as we're like kind of winding down, you, you know, their spring is kind of our, our fall, you know, and then their summer is our winter. It's kind of flip flop. So, I mean, I ask whatever question you want. I don't care. Yeah. Go for it. Uh, let's see. Oh, I need coffee? Oh, not a chance. Not a chance. I do not do coffee. Uh, maybe tea, but no, I'm telling you, like there's something about, okay, and if you haven't experienced this, you haven't experienced this, but like if you're outside for like a good full day, like for me, a full day outside is like three to five hours. If I'm outside, and that's like without going inside. I mean, I was like, I mean, it's almost like there's a chemical in the air in Michigan. And that's why they call it like like midday naps. Like Michigan, people are like, oh man, I need a midday nap. There's something in the air when it is like this specific temperature. Your body is like almost like, yeah, the sun's out, but you know what? Like it's time for a nap. And it's like, it hits you so hard, especially around like, because your circadian rhythm, it definitely has to do with the sun setting earlier. So during summertime here in Michigan, like, I mean, we'll get, the sun will set around like, I don't know, 9.30. And it's starting to set at like 8. So the sun's setting earlier, you know, your your body is getting kind of ready for, for winter. It's like beautiful weather. It's crisp in the morning. It's warm during the day. It's like perfect sleeping weather. So, yeah. Let's see. Uh, uh, speaking of coffee, did you make coffee with your coffee plant? Uh, yeah, we, um, we did make, we actually did make coffee. Um, we made about two cups of coffee, it's two small cups. <laughs> we didn't get that much. Let's see. Oh yeah. Oh, don't get me start. You guys don't get, oh man, I'll tell you what, I don't know about, yeah, Facebook's not really going too hard on the, uh. On sleeping talk, but I'll, oh yeah, you are, yeah, oh yeah, everybody's everybody's chiming in. So, who sleeps with the window open? Yeah, yeah, this is uh, what they call window open weather, and I'll tell you what, this gardener loves it. Oh yeah, Pamela, I do. June, me, Billy, always. <laughs> Seven, me, yeah, oh yeah. I'll tell you what. Oh yeah, okay, yep, yep. Oh yeah, this is like a universal, oh yeah. Amazing. Uh, no, Suzanne, we're not getting any more mint varieties. We only have one variety of mint available. Uh, it's an heirloom variety of mint. So we only have that one available, um, which actually is a really cool thing, you know. So, a lot of people want, they like write in saying, oh, I want to grow chocolate mint or orange mint or, um, 
mojito mint. There's so many different kinds of mint. Uh, apple mint is another one. A lot of those mints have been hybridized, and so they actually do better. Let me see if I can change the the lighting is shifting as you as we as the sun is setting. I'm sorry, you guys. I get a couple of people say the lighting is bad. I'm I nothing a whole lot I can do. The sun is like glaring behind me it's kind of making me kind of backlit um so uh those mints are hybridized and when they hybridize a mint um they don't they usually either are sterile meaning they don't provide any viable seeds or they provide so little seed that they're better to take cuttings from so if you're looking at growing like a chocolate mint or a mojito mint something like that um get cuttings and root the cuttings they root super easily but if you're looking at starting from seed, we do have a really reliable uh, mint variety that is awesome. I mean, I we we grew it in our garden. <laughs> we kind of can't get rid of it now. It's like it is established. Uh, have you ever tried dandelion root coffee? No, I haven't. Uh, actually, no. I tried, um, what's it called? Uh, chicory root. So chicory root coffee I've had. Um, Cindy actually bought a, a really good type of coffee. It's a decaf because I actually can't have caffeine. Surprise, surprise. Um, but uh, yeah, but I, so um, she got this chicory root coffee and it's awesome. I love it. It's a little more bitter than regular coffee. But I mean, if you like really like, kind of coffee that grips you, yeah, I mean, it's definitely a good thing to try. Uh, uh, Gene, can you use trifecta all season um, or only once? So you can use it all season if you want, but I always say use it only when you need it. Otherwise, you're really wasting money. Um, we do have trifecta in stock, by the way, to anyone, anybody that's wondering. Um, we also did just uh, last week put VegaGrow in stock. VegaGrow is our, is our brand new line. Well, we brought back a brand new line of fertilizer that we released about through uh, by four or five years ago at this point, um, and it's a veganic fertilizer, 100% Omri listed ingredients. Um, it's phenomenal stuff, and uh, it's kind of the the counterpart to Trifecta. So, um, yeah, so give that a shot. Um, we have about three minutes left from what I'm seeing here. Uh, we'll answer as many questions as I can. I know I want to get in so we can get some dinner. Because again, uh, like I said, we got football. Football is starting. Um, just uh, want to spend some time with, with Cindy. I'm sure she's not going to be very interested to watch football. So, uh, yeah. So we're going to spend some time with her. Spend some time with the little one. Eat some dinner. And uh, you guys need to go check out mygardener.com and get some seeds. So do some seed shopping. Um, uh, good question. How far out are you on orders? So we're actually caught up. We're actually completely caught up. If you place an order like today, it probably should be shipping within one to two business days. For a while, because we ran a sale, uh, we were really behind. We were, I mean, we were about a week and a half behind because it was just the two-day sale we ran was insane. Um, and we're not going to be running another sale. So unfortunately, seeds are not on sale. Um, basically, whatever is there is there. So get it. While it's there, it's limited quantity. If you see something and you want to get it before the end of the season, even if you want to get it for next year, keep it cool, dark, and dry. It's going to be fine. But um, but you definitely want to make sure that you get it if you want to get it. Because like, for instance, we might only have 30 thing, you know, 30 packets of seed left. Well, we put all 30 in stock, right? When our sleeve has seed, uh, you know, packets in it, but our store says we have that it's out of stock, that we have like nothing left, we'll go through, we'll count it, and we'll put it in stock. And so, like, you know, there's 30. <laughs> We're not packing anymore. So if it's sold out, it's sold out. So uh, and it's sold out until like November. And some varieties may be sold out until like January or February. So if you want to get it, get it now. It's, I mean, the price isn't going to change. Um, so the price is the price. But if you want to secure it and get it, you know, for next spring or for your fall garden, give it a shot. Oh, man, I'm really sorry. Uh, I, I apologize, Angel. Uh, what's your website? 
Um, I guess I never, uh, it should be in the description box, but migardener.com is our website. MI Gardener, just like our YouTube account, uh, migardener.com. Um, we pack all of our own seeds. We get them, uh, we get them from small family farmers and, uh, we pack them up in small packets, super affordable price. You get a ton of seeds per pack and, uh, they're all organically grown too. So you, you can't beat it. Um, go check them out. Yeah. And we do free shipping on orders of, on seed orders of $12 or more. Uh, should I be topping my tomatoes? Uh, depends on where you're at. Uh, thank you, North Star. I appreciate it. Thanks. Thanks for sharing that link. Uh, I do believe it's in the description box though. Um, so here in Michigan, yes, you definitely want to be topping your tomato plants. Tomatoes that are forming right now will not have enough time to ripen up, but you do want to ripen up the tomatoes that are on the vine. So by topping your tomato plants, especially here in Michigan, you want to do that. You typically want to start topping your tomato plants about 40 to 45 days before your first frost. So use that how you will. Um, you know, down in Ohio, it's going to be a little bit different. You're going to be like one week behind us. Um, right now we're right around, someone do the math for me, uh, October 25th. We should be like right-ish around that time, about 45 to 50 days before our first frost date. Basically, you know, we have not topped ours yet, but I think in about two days, three days, we're going to be topping ours. Uh, when is garlic available? Oh, okay. <laughs> garlic is available next week. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I just feel like I hate, I, I know that people come in, come in, you know, in and out and stuff like that. So don't worry. We're going to have garlic in stock. Uh, we've seen a lot of urgency this year to get garlic. I think a lot of people are just very fearful about inventory, seed prices, you don't have to worry about seed prices. We're not changing the prices. We have dedicated ourselves to not upping our price. We are going to absorb those costs elsewhere. Um, we've become more uh, more efficient and able to save money in other areas. So, you know, we are we're taking on some of that cost ourselves that we're going to you know pass on to you guys um, in the form of not raising our prices. We're not raising our prices, not on garlic, not on seeds. We're just not, we're not going to, we are not going to do that. Um, I cannot do that to you guys. I won't do that to you guys. It's not going to happen. Um, so yes, so garlic is coming in next week. It's coming in next week. I can't say exactly for sure when it is arriving from our farmer on Tuesday. Um, it's coming from an organic farm. Yes. Yes. Our garlic is heirloom and organic as well, just like our seeds are. Um, and so uh, it's coming in on Tuesday. It's been held up in transit for some some reason. Um, and then we have to count it, sort it, and clean it. So yeah, probably Wednesday or Thursday, I would say. Let's see. Uh, what do I do about late blight? Great question. So... Uh, unfortunately, late blight is something that if you have it, like right now our tomatoes are kind of starting to get late blight. It's inevitable, especially when the nights get cold. When you get into like the low to mid 50s at night and uh, and the daytime temperatures get up, you know, in like the 70s or so in, during the daytime, you're going to have a lot of condensation that forms on the leaves. Especially here in Michigan, we get that that warm air off the water that mixes with like the cool uh, ground temperature, you get a lot of condensation. I mean, the grass is is basically soaking wet like it rained almost every single morning. Um, and that that moisture leads to a lot of leads to a lot of things like like soil borne disease like blight. You can prolong it by spraying your plants down with a baking soda spray, but there's not a whole lot you can do. It's for a lack of a better example, it's kind of the cancer of the garden. I mean, when it's there's not really, it's the plants are, yeah, it is. Uh, it's not a it's not a pretty sight. 
Let's put it that way. Um, and so it's just, it is what it is. Um, and so you can kind of kick the can down the road, but inevitably it, your plants are going to succumb to late blight. Now, early blight in the spring, a lot of people ask me why early blight can be cured, but late blight can't. The reason is because early blight happens in early season when you have kind of similar weather, but it's getting warmer and drier versus cooler and wetter. So it's like the conditions are not improving in the fall. Uh, Hillbilly Prepper, are you ever going to get your family a greenhouse? Uh, no, we're not. But our shop is going to have a greenhouse, which I'm really excited about. We're going to have a 1,000 square foot greenhouse, you guys. Man, I'm pumped. We've actually been, uh, I've been kind of greenhouse shopping over the past uh, week or so. And uh, we're looking at a 20 by 48 greenhouse. So fingers crossed uh, we can get a, uh, we've been talking with, um, I've been making a couple calls with some companies uh, that sell them, distribute them, and put them up for you. So, uh, you know, Lord willing, we're going to have one by hopefully, hopefully when, hopefully probably before December, I think is kind of what we're aiming for. We want to do it before the ground freezes. So that's kind of our goal. Yeah, yeah, 20 by 48. It's a big size. Good. It's almost 1,000 square feet. Do you ship seeds to Pakistan? Uh, we definitely can. Yeah, we definitely can. We ship seeds all around the world. <clears throat> uh, Brandon asks, what is your favorite crop this year? Oh, man. Total, like, favorite crop in general? Or, like, is that fruit, vegetable? Or exclusively vegetable? So... If it was any crop, I would probably have to say it's probably the pears this year. The pears this year were insane. However, if we're talking about vegetables, my favorite crop was actually, man, that's a tough one. So we grew a brand new pepper in the garden. You guys probably know it's called the bird's beak pepper. The bird's beak pepper, uh, it's known as uh, the Bequinho, Pequinho, something like that. It's just yellow bird's beak pepper. It is, wow. It, I'll tell you, it's kind of a love-hate. People don't, a lot of people that I know don't like it because you eat it and your mind is, if you've ever had a really, really super hot pepper, that spicy floral taste uh gets it, it kind of gets you as like that trigger where it's like oh this is going to be hot right the first thing you get is that aroma and then whammo like when i ate a habanero yes 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 it's right like when i ate the habanero so uh who saw that by the way that was oh my gosh that was so funny that was so funny i thought i was a hot shot i was eating a, a little a little lemon habanero Oh my gosh, that thing knocked my socks off. Um, so yeah, I would say um, I probably would say the yellow bird's beak pepper was my favorite, only because the flavor was insane. It was so it made you feel like you're eating the world's hottest pepper, but it's like actually very mild, super floral, really cool shape. Um, probably the yellow bird's beak pepper. A close second would be, man, you're going to make me do this, aren't you? I said, our pears were our favorite fruit this year by far. I mean, that was, you couldn't come close. We got like probably 400 pears off of our tree. We ate probably close to 150 of them. We gave a bunch of, uh, away to friends and family. We literally just had bags full of pears. And we are just like, you know, uh, like Oprah Winfrey. <laughs> like, like, you get a bag of pears and you get a bag of pears. So, yeah. Um, oh, oh, okay. I actually forgot about this one. It was kind of earlier in the season. The tender green cucumber. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. The tender green cucumber and the Ashley cucumber, they'd probably be tied for my second favorite vegetable this year because, wow, they were something. They were something. I've never had such a you know, such a smooth, 
sweet, succulent cucumber. I mean, they were abs amazing homegrown cucumbers. Uh, GTJR uh, said, um, says, uh, help with growing sugar beets in Alaska, please. So, um, let's see here. There we go. Sorry about that, guys. I'm, my batteries are whining low. I'm running low on battery. So, uh, plus I'm over a little bit. But, uh, if you're looking at growing sugar beets in Alaska, um, you want to start them early because sugar beets actually gain more sugar the longer they grow. So you want to start them early spring. If you start them in early spring, you're going to harvest them probably around like early to mid August. And what you want to do is you want to, you basically want to chop the tops off and then you want to cure them. You want to just kind of pile them up, literally pile them up for probably, I would say like probably two weeks or so. You're going to pile those sugar beets up. And what they're going to do is it's going to evaporate. You're going to pile them up in a, in a pile or you can put them in a, a warm room. You want to let them evaporate because that's going to actually condense the sugars. It's going to reduce how much you're going to have to boil. Then you chop them up, small pieces, throw them in a blender. Or you can juice them. You can throw them in a juicer and actually juice the, uh, you can actually juice the, uh, the sugar beets. Take that and then just boil it off. Keep boiling. Keep boiling. And then when it gets down to, you know, a really, really thick syrup, that's where you want to be really careful. And you basically want to, you know, for the, for like the, the home gardener, what you should do is at that point when it gets down to like a syrup, like a really, really thick syrup, just basically boil it until it uh, reaches, um, like on the, on the candy thermometer phase, it would be like considered like, like hard crack phase. And that's where you like, you, you pour it out on a tray and it like shatters, right? You want to get it to that level because then what you can do is then you can throw it in a blender and you can make your own crystalline sugar. So give it a shot. Uh, how is the freeze right freeze dryer working out? Amazing. I love it. I should do more videos on it. Um, we might, uh, we might freeze dry some corn actually do some freeze dried. I, I, I want to do a, I want to do a ramen mix from the garden. Do some peas, some corn, some carrots, and then do a little bit of uh, take some uh, some uh, tofu bits, and um, and then like a few little bits of uh, uh, nori or like seaweed. Throw them in the freeze dryer and basically make my own ramen packets. That'd be amazing. All right, so I got time for like two more questions, I, and then I got I do have to head out. Um, because uh, I want to make sure I, I, I got to give I gotta give family time too. I love you guys so much and I appreciate all your support and your love and appreciate the super chats and the stars you guys send on Facebook. It, it means a lot. We donate 100% of that. Well, not donate, but like we we give that back to the channel. Um, you know, if, uh, if, if we need to buy a new camera, a new microphone, you know, batteries for recording, any, any video type equipment to create more content for you guys, that all goes back into the channel, 100% of it. None of it goes into our pockets or anything like that. It just all goes back to the channel. So thank you guys so much for, for your support of the channel. Um, I think Mrs. Emma Gardner wants supper. Yeah, she probably does. We, we, yeah, we eat a little bit later here in the Emma Gardner household. Our typical eating time is like around 6, 6.30. So. Uh, you love the waterfall behind. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, it's uh, those on Facebook can't really see it, but you see the... Maybe you can see there. Sorry, you guys. So, cool. Yeah, it's very cool. No, I love it. Um, the Aquascape. If you guys haven't seen the episodes, uh, go check out the episodes. We actually, um, so uh, um, Ed the Pond Professor actually has them up on his channel. Go check out Ed the Pond Professor. Um, and then on our channel too, we have kind of our, our viewpoint and then they uploaded their viewpoint and it was such a such a fun episode, such or such a fun series, I should say. It was like a little three part mini series for both of us. Um, all right, one more question from YouTube, and I'll do one more question from Facebook. Um, so uh, let's see here. Um, uh, 
Oh, good question. How to keep root crops through winter? Great question. Thank you so much for asking. This is a phenomenal question. So um, if you're growing things like beets, what you can do is you can take a, a bunch of leaves, throw them over top of your, your beets, just throw them over top, and if the layer is about eight to 10 inches thick, the ground is gonna stay thawed, it's gonna stay thawed underneath the, uh, those leaves. Pull the leaves back, you can harvest beets well into January, February. Or if you harvest them, you can actually take them and then you take damp sand. Throw your beets in damp sand, throw your carrots in damp sand, throw your, uh, your parsnips, your rutabagas, throw those in damp sand and they're going to stay for months upon months. As long as you keep them cool, uh, like around below, I'd say like 45 degrees, they're going to be totally fine. They're not going to go soft. They're not going to mold. They're going to be absolutely beautiful below 45 degrees. I personally say like around 40 degrees is ideal, but some people can't get that cold. So 45 degrees, you're going to have a really nice long shelf life still. All right. Um, so one more uh, for uh, for Facebook here, and then I gotta gotta get heading. Also, you can do that with dahlia tubers too. If you get if you grow dahlias and you want to get the tubers, throw them in some damp sand. They'll stay they'll stay fine until spring. Um, Bridges are walking onions in stock. No, they're not yet. Uh, we're gonna put those in stock when uh, garlic comes in stock. So uh, so stay tuned for those. We're gonna be we are gonna be selling some some walking onions in very very limited quantity. Uh, let's see here. Uh, okay, last one we'll end on is um, how do I get rid of cucumber beetles? Amy asks. So uh, we actually have an entire video on cucumber beetles and squash bugs. I'd recommend checking that out. It's not a cop-out answer. We grow at a time when cucumber beetles are not present. We grow at a time when squash bugs are not present. Um, we do that because fighting them takes a lot of time and a lot of effort, especially if you're in an area that's plagued with them. It's far easier to grow them in a different time of the year when they're not as prevalent. Um, and that would be like for, you know, for fall. So uh, we're growing zucchinis and cucumbers for our fall garden, and they're doing phenomenally. Not a single cucumber beetle in sight. And uh, we lost our cucumbers to cucumber beetles. So I can safely say this is a method that works. Um, and we learned it from the Amish. So they've been doing this. The Amish and Mennonites in, a, in a, two towns over from us has been doing uh, this for, you know, as, as, long as, they've, uh, as long as they've been farming over there. So it's definitely a reputable uh, you know, method of growing and a very effective one. So uh, thank you guys so very much for hanging out with me. 47 minutes of time. Um, and uh, thank you guys so very much. If you want to go check out mygardener.com, we have vegetable seeds, trifecta, fertilizer. Uh, we have Vega Grow fertilizer, anything you need in terms of fertilizer, uh, t shirts, uh, hats, goodies like that, great gifts and stuff like that. Help support the show, uh, help support our team, and uh, get some stuff. We just put all of our seeds back in stock. So uh, support small family farmers as well, support U.S. grown farm uh, you know, seed. Um, and uh, U.S. farms as well. So uh, do what you can, support the movement, get some stuff to go uh, to plant out your garden, and uh, get some stuff in the ground for fall. You still have lots of time. So as always, thank you guys so much. I will look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow over on YouTube. We've got a video coming out, so don't miss that. I'm super excited about it. I loved it. It was a ton of fun filming it, and uh, we'll catch you guys later. So have a good night, you guys, and uh, love you guys. All right, take care all. Bye.